I'm a dog. I'm a lovely dog. Oh, what a day. What a lovely day. And this is Sibling Rivalry. Mad Max is back to save a bunch of women from this evil overlord. And that's about it. That is the movie in a nutshell. And probably the most ambitious yet kind of storyless Mad Max ever. Uh, this is getting all sorts of rave reviews and people talking about it. And uh, I gotta say, it is probably the most adrenaline-filled rush I probably had in a movie like it's, in a really, really long time, just consistently throughout the whole thing. You know, it's visual storytelling. I'm getting a little sick of people just like, there's absolutely no story, nothing. I'm like, just because it doesn't have reams and reams of dialogue doesn't mean there isn't shit happening. No, no, but you, we were talking about this before. I mean, you could make the argument with the other Mad Max movies, but especially in this one, Mad Max could be played by anybody. Like, you know, some people are like, oh, I don't know if they, if they don't get Gibson, it's still gonna be Mad Max. It's like, you could put fucking Chris Tucker in this role and it would be the exact same movie. No, no, no it wouldn't. No, I... Chris I, Tucker? Oh, no. No, I... I hey, he... Silver Lion's playbook, he, he can do drama, man. He can do drama. <laughs> no, you really could put anyone here. And not to say Tom Hardy does bad or anything like that, but this is not a movie that, that is... That doesn't mean there's no story. Though. No, no, no. Okay, here's... You bring up a very good point. Uh, that everything be done, this movie... And the reason I think it works is because you most movies like this, where it's nothing but action, nothing but stunts... Uh, going on through most of it, uh, you know, and very few times takes a break and, and talks or whatever, we wouldn't like, but you bring up a good point that they're actually, the story is being told through visual means uh, and very unbelievably minimal dialogue uh, going on, but you catch it very quickly and you catch it through the atmosphere, you catch it through the music, you catch it through the visuals. The film opens up with... Um, well, and Mad Max gets captured, and he tries to escape to get immediately brought back. Uh, and you see this great big intimidating guy who's got this metal face with these big, like, woodchuck teeth and these big, yeah, these big glowing eyes and stuff like that. And he comes out to this water world of people, you know, just, ah, ah, like this. And he's got this, he's this big ugly guy, and he just holds her, My children, I am gonna spew religious mumbo jumbo that you obviously don't care about because they're all like, they got these bulls on their way they're waiting and he just pulls this lever and this water comes down they go ah, ah, and they hold the cups out and the bowls and stuff like that and he has it on for maybe a few seconds and he turns it off and you immediately get how this world works that's you what that's my it. point it's not that there's no story it's streamlined honestly it's something i've been waiting for sitting through all of these fucking like pirates at world's end or pieces of shit like the transformer sequels they're like eight hours long and like take forever and I'm like, wow, this managed in like, you know, ten minutes to tell me everything I needed to know with hardly a line of dialogue either. Yeah, this is sort of what a Michael Bay film should be. It is, it, it's action, it's nonsense, but it's done intelligently and it's done with a lot of thought, surprisingly. You know, you, you can, I can see a person looking at this and just saying, this is a dumb action film. And I would go, yeah, but dumb action films take but it's a, awesome. No, but dumb action films to be done right and enjoyable take a lot of effort and a lot of thought. And this is uh, that kind of movie. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it's one of those films. Like, like I said, if you were looking, I mean, Sin City looks like complex compared to this film. I mean, there's. Oh, and you know, Sensei, there's a lot of violence. Like every second someone's getting punched, uh, just take out half the talking in Sin City and just add even more action, replace it with even more action. And like I said, it's... Honestly, I don't remember many lines from Sin City. Whenever I remember it, I remember only the visuals anyway, so my mind did it for me. I remember that. That's because I'm obsessed with that movie. I love that. I love the sequel, too. Um, but yeah, this is a film, it's a very... I would almost kind of argue it's kind of like an experiment. It's an experiment in what can you do, you know, how it's much it's action... It's an experiment can, in violence. Kind of! No, honestly, because... A symphony of brutal flavors. No, 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 because that's what I was saying with, uh, you know, with Sin City. Like, you know, that is kind of an experiment in violence, and how much can you do yet still give a shit 
about it. And in Sin City, I think it works, but how to put... Sin City, I think, could feel like kind of like jazz, like sort of this jazzy violence and stuff. This is like a symphony this of is, violence. This, this is, is the is fucking 1812 overture yeah. of violence. Uh, and... You got fucking cannons and drums and... Oh, God. Well, with that said... Actually, I... literally drums. Yeah, no, on there cards. are people... It wasn't a metaphor. No. There's okay, taiko me... drums on these giant... Like, boom, boom, boom. Let, let, let me give you an idea. So, like, like I said, the film starts off with this... Opening with the guy turning on the water, turning it off, and beautiful music playing. Even that just looked unbelievable. Just him turning on the water. This film has unbelievable atmosphere and environment. Uh, and then, like, it cuts to, I think, like, this one car is heading off where it shouldn't be, and they're just like, you know, where is it going? I don't know. Do you know what's in there? Yeah, I know what's in there. It's like, you know, summon the war boys! Yeah, uh, 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 herds of war boys! Come, come! And they're, here's all these guys, like, dressed in white makeup and these black eyes, and they're just like, yeah, yeah, we're gonna go! I can't go! My blood is blah, 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 but I want to go! It's like, you want to go? You want to go? And they punch each other, then they get their heads together and go, <laughs> all right, brother, you're gonna go, ha, ha, ha! And they go into the cars, and they ride off, and they're driving, and this guy all these guys with drums start hitting these drums and they're all going <laughs> <laughs> and they're riding off and all of a sudden like you see like the car that's going away you see Charlie's there and driving and she's like okay you know can't get this going even faster and this guy where are we going she shoots the fucker and all these cars are coming you got Mamax strapped to the front uh, cause he's like this guy's blood now so this guy's getting blood from like Mamax a fucking hood driving. ornament with his, in a face cage going, yeah and they're driving and the wind is coming through and just the the fucking topper is that on top of the drums, on top of everybody screaming and going, what a lovely day, and stuff like that, before the action even really starts, it comes to this fucking guy with this phallic guitar, this metal guitar, and like this mask on, like playing this metal guitar and with the guitar fire coming out. Fire. He's like, yeah, like I mean, like it's like fire semen coming out of this guy's guitar dick, going, and they're all driving and they're going, what a lovely day! Like that's what's the thing? <laughs> that's before the action. Yeah, starts. that's that's like the prelude. That's your overture. Like that's use the a classical <laughs> music term. <laughs> I mean, it, it's one of those things where, and it's just, a, a part of me was looking at that this. That was the appetizer. No, a, a part of me was looking at this, and I said to myself, oh my god, this this is going to be the whole movie, isn't it? It's going to be this throughout the whole thing. And a part of me was both really afraid, like, man, I was kind of hoping for, even Mad Max at its most violence had a little bit more story in talking at this, but then a part of me is like, I, this is such a rush. And this is such I, an experience I remember, that I didn't mind. I remember turning to you and quoting Archer, Krieger from Archer. I was like, stop, stop, my penis can only get so erect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I said the same thing. So I'm just like, I am so I, hard right now. <laughs> the fire came out with the heavy metal guitar spraying fire. I literally wanted, I had to fight the urge to not stand up in the middle of the cinema and applaud and just go, what? <laughs> at, at some point, I think, like, yeah, I, I don't even know when. I, I think we sort of turned to each other. We just sort of went, <laughs> like, it just plays I, it's into a sort your... of if, if I like a Flintstones size bone of meat in my hand, I would have, like, watched that sequence and been like, <laughs> and then, like, the two people in front of us, we just use it, like, as their heads as drums, like, dun 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 dun. It, it just plays to your inner Neanderthal, pretty much. Uh, but it does oh, it so well and with so such wonderful. and with such talent and with such ease. Um, so, but I, it's the story. You know, I'm so bored. Particularly the post, I'd say around maybe 2001 action films have just become such CGI clusterfuck fans. Oh yeah, that's a big... There is CG in this, but, I mean, and you can tell what's real. There's a lot so that's It's so funny real. because compared to other action films I've seen in the past 15 years, uh, there is minimal dialogue. I mean, they don't share most of their stuff through a bunch of dialogue. There's a little dialogue near the end, but, I mean, most of it is just completely visceral. But, like, Transformers 2. I remember sitting in Transformers 2 in that battle in the desert in the last half of that movie, and I remember just, I kept checking my phone, and I'm like, so this has been 45 minutes, and I've been watching the same battle. In this movie, I swear, it's gotta be, like, an hour, 45 minutes of pure action, and maybe 20, 20 minutes, minutes yeah. sitting around, if even that, and not once, not once, was I ever bored in this movie. Not once. 
So I, I would definitely say with that, there's... I, I think you can tell whether or not you would like this film based on what we're saying, because if, if you're not an action fan... Like Let me I, put it to you this way. This is the sort of film where more than any film I've seen in the past 15 years, you need, like, a lap bar <laughs> and a harness to come down over the cinema seats like it's a freaking roller coaster. Can you imagine it's, like, in 4D, like, they shake the seats with you as you're... <laughs> that would be amazing, actually. I probably would have thrown up. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I could have handled that. <laughs> Somebody make that happen. Yeah. Turn but this I, into a roller There were coaster. so many points where I just wish I had, like, a harness or a lap bar to grip onto because I was like, oh! <laughs> oh, my God. But, oh. but, you know, and I think, um, you know, one of the things that, like I said, you could say is, you know, well, why is something like this but not Transformers? It, well, I, I like the first Transformers, but, like, the other Michael Bay sequels and a lot of these other action films. Well, for we, one thing, I don't give a shit about the characters. Even with minimal dialogue, I gave more crap about Imperator Furiosa and Max and the sex slaves and the, like they were all interesting even just to watch them run around was more interesting than half of what i get well and, like and I, I always argue i mean this is why i you know i don't think people like you know i mean this is why russell crowe never does anything for me or kevin costner or whatever they they have not mastered what it means to say so much with no dialogue and just have a, a stone face and these people have charlie's there and especially every time it just cut to her Drive it. She just turns She's got this and just glare. Like, yeah, and it's like she doesn't have to like, and maybe just the slightest nod of her head or say she just gives a look, and it's like, dude, you, you just sort of get it, and it, and it's good acting. Tom Hardy functions with like, I, I mean, it's minimal dialogue. It, I don't think he says anything for like the first 30, 40 minutes. Like he he's has like got an a, opening he's got like a cage. It. Yeah, he's got like a cage over his face. Like it's it's all like runs up. Water, water. Yeah, what a, like yeah, that's or, his only line. Or, right? that's my head! <laughs> like, that's... <laughs> it's my head! It's my head! <laughs> like, um, and honestly, I, I love Tom Hardy, but he's not always the easiest to understand, so I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, if, I'm like, if he can act with his eyes and his body movements, and I'm like, great, and he does, and it's awesome. So it, it is definitely, I mean, with, without any doubt, it's a Mad Max movie. I mean, it's not like, I, I don't know why... I mean, the questions around this film actually really fascinate me because man, the Mad Max movies were hits when they came out, but they're not like talked about too much nowadays. Well, it's not like there was a been, demand, but they wanted cult, to do their cult class. Yeah, but th this is a film like the the directors have wanted to make for a while, and I think after they did Babe Pig in the City, they're like, you know what? I we got even more fucked up imagery in our head, and we got to get this out because this movie, like, this was supposed <laughs> to be a kids movie, but scared the shit out of your little kids. I'm, I'm talking about Babe 2. If, if you're like, what, Babe 2? You clearly haven't seen it. Oh, that's a great movie, yeah. It, it, it's wonderful, but it's, it's like, it's freaky up. shit. Uh, so, yeah, so that you can tell they're like, we just, we got to incorporate some of this shit into Mad Max. Like, you know, imagine what we can do now with, you know, uh, with the production and everything. And somehow, over all these years, they got the money to do this film, and so many of the stunts are really there. It's the anti-Lucas. He waited 15, 20 years, you know, whatever, to do this. And it's instead a, it, of... It shows. Yeah, yeah, and instead of using only CGI and filming the entire thing on a green screen set, like, he actually blew real cars up and did this. It's, it's literally like the complete inverse of George Lucas. Hmm. It's like, it's like one good, one evil. <laughs> well, I heard they were trying to make this movie for a while. I guess they want to make more. Which is um, why I think most people thought initially it was going to suck. Because, like, you hear about something being in production hell for, like, ten years. Mm -hmm. Who would have thought? Like, well, the, you know, but what's so, again, what, I guess that's kind of what fascinates me about this movie is that you have been in production hell. And most, most movies in production hell that are focusing mostly on the visuals and the style and the look are usually awful and they usually look beautiful but they're usually awful and it is so fascinating just to see a film that like you said it is visual storytelling but i mean compared to like uh, thunderdome or road warrior or even the first one uh i mean it's just so minimal in, in what they say uh and and how many twists and turns there are in the story because i mean at least Twist and turn wide, there's not that much in the story. I mean, even at the end, when they're like, we're, yeah, we're going to go back because it's undefended. I'm like, it, it, they're not, uh, yeah, they, they can't defend the area. I'm like, spoilers. What? <laughs> well, no, no, no. But I mean, it's, it's uh, yeah, you, you kind of know this is coming. But you kind of go, wait, what? How, how does that work? How, how did they, I'll forget it. I'm just here to see shit blow up. It's Mad Max. And that's kind of what you accept. But it, like I say, it, it's done so well. 
Um, so, yeah, I would say if you're looking for, like, really in-depth character or character study, because I, I would argue that, like, Thunderdome you know, it did have a little bit, uh, and, and there was, I mean, I, I, I really like Thunderdome a lot, and I like what they did with that, and this is just, like, the opposite. You're the one, opposite. dog. You're I don't one. get it. I, I only found out recently if people like, yeah, Thunderdome was the least of the films. Like, what the fuck? are you talking about that is like so clearly by far the best and uh, like the first one is the least uh, no I'll, I'll uh, take it I'll take it on right now right. how many lines can you quote uh, from the other Mad Meg movies like you know enough, but like you know how many lines can man, I quote two men enter one man leaves you how know? many lines can I quote from this one there may be three <laughs> no no but that's why I'm saying I mean it's one of those things where it's like I remember so much more from Thunderdome and it's like you know, Mad Max, great action by Barely Remember a Thing, and Road Warrior, you know, is one of those where it's like, it's cool, it has a great climax, but if you were to tell me, what happened before that? A uh, guy with a cool mask, and but it, it's cool, but like Thunderdome was the first one that's like, I remember that story, I remember what was going on, and I wanted to see them get out, I wanted to see them live by the end. And this one okay. is it, so strange, because it, it kind of does I the did. same thing, but with just the opposite way, where there's so I mean, little talking. I don't, I don't hate Thunderdome. But I know where people are coming from, and I certainly Thunderdome's not my favorite. Um, it one thing PG thirteen film. It I, I I'm kind Was of it really? with, yeah. <laughs> wow. I'm pretty sure it's, it's pretty it, pretty for PG thirteen. I don't well, well. It was also made in the eighties. Remember mm. this is eighties PG thirteen versus our sissy pansy PG thirteen yeah. nowadays. Um, but it I, I didn't find it quite as gritty and intense as the previous two. And so it, I get that. I, I know, know where I know where I know where people are coming from. I'm actually kind of with the movie up until the kids. And then for me it, it creates kind of an Ewok problem of just like I don't know if I really wanted to see Mad No, Max. even the kids, like, like are drowning in sand traps and they lose, like, a good chunk of them and well, stuff like makes, that. Like, what makes it work enough, great. and why I don't hate the movie, what makes it work enough, I was discussing this with Jim J. Roz when we were filming at the location uh, earlier yesterday, is that there is the fun part of Mad Max. It's by like, you know, I just got out of the freaking desert, and as far as I'm concerned, you kids have paradise here. And he pretty much knocks that older girl out, ties her to a post, is like, we're all fucking staying. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, like, once again, like, that's the thing I love about Mad Max, is like, in almost every iteration, like, outside of the first one, before he goes nuts, like, he, he, he's just kind of in it for himself. He's yeah, like, he, he's kind of this thing. You know, like, well, and that's the other thing, too, with this one. Yeah. For a plot perspective, then they're just like, oh, well, then the, the other kids escape, and then he's got to go back to Barter Town, and, like, I feel like it's really slow. There's something about it that... That, that, that part goes a little slow. With me. Uh, okay. yeah. Especially after Barter Town is so amazing. And, like, the Thunderdome is so amazing and stuff like that. Uh, that, you know, yeah, it goes a little slow, but it's like, really? I mean, it's like, I, I'm just finding out now that people think, like, lesser of Thunderdome. Like, d d fucking Tina Turner is in that and she's amazing. Like, she, you know, and then a uh, raggedy you man. And you and I make quite a pair of raggedy man. It, it, it's, it's fucking amazing and the climax is great, you know, and then all the stuff Duh. there. And I, I just don't get how people are just like, I'm like, it's fucking Thunderdome. It's the one everybody quotes. It's the title everybody remembers. I mean, it's like, it's fucking Thunderdome. Oh, but that's kind of like, you know, I mean, the same thing happens with it. And I think these films are all very similar. Um, it's Sam Raimi's Evil Dead trilogy. Hmm. Like, even though in many ways, I think of Army of Darkness as kind of the most fun. And it's the way everybody quotes Army of Darkness mm. more than any of the films. So because well, two has so little dialogue. <laughs> yeah, but if you ask for people's favorites, they normally are going with one or two. Mm -hmm. um, but everybody quotes a third. So just because they quote Thunderdome the most doesn't mean everybody thinks it's No, but it's okay, the but that's what I'm saying. Like, even with Army of Darkness, people are like, yeah, that's... That's the least of them. That's just, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's like, I understand no, I they're still very like different, Army but it's like, but it's fucking Army of Darkness. I still, it's the same yeah, thing. And it's I'll fucking say this, I still enjoy Thunderdome, but I get where people are coming from, and I certainly don't think it's the best one. <laughs> See, I, I love it. Well, we're, we're, we're getting off topic. Who uh, run Barter Town? <laughs> Master Blaster. <laughs> That's <laughs> See, right. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I can't remember a fucking line um, from Road Warrior. And I, I love that movie, but it's like, I can't remember a thing they said in there. I remember how it looked. But and, and that speaking, was it. Of, speaking of Evil Dead, though, I will say this, because like, I'm trying to find a way to describe this film, and this must be what it felt like when people first saw Evil Dead 2, or the Evil Dead on the big screen. Because the cinematography in this movie is the same kinetic energy 
in all of those early Sam Raimi films. I remember I turned to you and I'm like, this is the best Sam Raimi film I've seen in 15 years. <clears throat> like, and like, I, it's sad, but I'm like, I wish Sam Raimi would watch this movie and take notes and be like, remember when you used to do this? Like, this sort of movie. He like does just, that sometimes. Drag Me to some Hell. Th- Drag Me to Hell was that, fun, yeah. but it still wasn't like, let me do this way. Drag Me to Hell was fun, but it was certainly not what Mad Max is to Miller's earlier work. <laughs> like, this movie, to Miller's earlier work, is even crazier and more outrageous, and he knows how to use the CGI to his advantage. Um, and yeah, the, the cinematography and the kinetic energy in this film, it's just its just such a wild ride. It's just like, I, it's really the best Sam Raimi movie I've seen well, since, you know. You know. What, what it catches that I think Sam Raimi caught so early on, too, and I, I think I know what you're talking about, because after you Visual have, like, storytelling, for one thing. Yeah. Sh- each shot... Uh, no. Each shot serves a purpose, and I, the people are like, "We well, did anything a camera does is just." But no, if no, you look at not. Ray, no, if you look at that waste time. You watch a Michael Bay film, watch and, an M Night Shyamalan yeah. movie. You'll, watch you'll know the definition film. of wasting time. <laughs> and so many shots just waste time. It's just like, well, we're just going to show this because we can, and like all of those scenes in the Miller film, in in Mad Max Fury Road, set up everything you needed to know in 15 minutes with hardly any dialogue in Raimi films the early ones work the same way he would show you everything you need to know with the camera and it's almost a lost art which I think is some of the reason why critics are responding to this is they see that well here's the thing too that I think really reminds me of the old Raimi too uh particularly yeah yeah, really the, the old Raimi is okay you have this this rush I mean maybe the first 40 minutes is just go 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 run 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 and we're you know speed it up you know all this stuff all this extreme action even when they're setting up the story it's just done so kinetic and so energized and finally when like this action scene ends there's like this long long pause and you just you're looking at dune for a bit and it's just someone getting out of the dune so slowly and looking around, and it's what you need, it's what you require after all that action. And I've never seen something like Michael Bay do that, where it's like, no. well, well, now we need to talk about other shit. Well, now we need to do a comedy part. Well, now we need to do... And this one knows it's like, you need... This one knows you need that scene, like, at the end of, like, fucking step in time. Like, it's such a rush. And then you have that quiet little moment where things just sort of relax for a bit, and you just catch your breath, and you go, wow! I mean, you just, you appreciate... But the epic shots are truly epic. There's yeah, a sandstorm scene and the setup for it, the long shot, yeah. where you just see the t- this tiny oil rig, which you've seen up close and is huge, but now it's this tiny oil rig going up against this giant sandstorm, driving into it, and it's it's like Lawrence of fucking Arabia. Yeah. It is like one of the most epic shots I've ever seen, and it helps break up the monotony. It's just like, I'm sorry. Like, some action directors don't have it. Like, they just don't know how to make an action scene look interesting. And, like, Miller obviously does. He knows how to throw close-ups. He knows how to do practical effects. He demonstrates in this film he damn well knows how to do CGI without you even realizing well, it. The, the, the I forget she, movies. There on the, I forget she, she has only one arm in this movie, and it wasn't until near the end it suddenly hit me. I'm like, oh, yeah, that has to be an effect. I didn't even freaking It's very think well of it. You know, there's I two. I didn't even think of it. You know, I, I saw this, and a few days earlier, I saw Ex Machina, which is very good, by the way. Uh, both movies have kind of the exact same effect of a woman with a robotic. I mean, her, it's only the arm in the Ex Machina. I mean, it's one, most of her body is robotic. And both of them, it's like, I know it has to be computer because there's no other way, but it's like, they're seamless. It looks like they're right there. I mean, even beyond like what they did with Gollum. Uh, I mean, it's like, I'm just trying to look for the traditional CG stuff that I see in movies, and it's like, it just looks real. I mean, there it are, just there looks like it's right there. There were two moments, only two, <clears throat> in the entire film. I mean, there's a whole sandstorm sequence mm-hmm. where bikes go flying up and lightning striking, and there's sandstorm yeah, tornadoes. you know it's gotta be CG. But the thing is, I didn't think, mm-hmm. oh, that's CG, or oh, that looks fake. I was so wrapped up in it, yeah. it the thought never even crossed my mind. Went right over my head. Uh, the same thing with her arm missing the arm there were only two things that stuck out that it took me out of the film slightly it didn't ruin the film in any way but i'm like okay cgi like it 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 took me out of it one cgi blood splatters they occasionally did that and i'm not gonna harp on them too much but i'm like you're filming at 60 miles per hour in the open desert if you don't want to do blood packets and you just want to cgi it freaking do it i that's fine 
That took me out of it, and then there's one gratuitous CGI moment involving right, the, the steering crash. wheel. Yeah, yeah, that was like three D. And, and and like, but really, just one out of the whole movie. Yeah, I mean, I'm like, <laughs> I, I contrast that with other action movies where you see like forty moments like that, and by the time you hit the twelfth, you're just like, I'm just done. Yeah, like this is not interesting to watch anymore. Um, but oh god, I fucking love this movie. Yeah, like, no, I, I mean, I I would I would definitely say that uh, it. it this film, as you can gather, it's it's mostly a rush. It's a rush, and it, it's visual storytelling. You can pretty much watch it on mute and figure out what's going on. I mean, you really don't even need yeah. that much talking. Which um, is much... <sighs> you know, I come from a writing background, so I want to be like, oh yes, it's all in the dialogue and it's all in the writing, but I, really, when push comes to shove, I think well, it's still shooting a something medium. as a silent medium, or, as, or shooting something as a kind of silent movie, like it has to be all visual is so much harder because you have to constantly stay visually interesting. You can't rely on dialogue and just say, okay, say this, say that, say that to impart our information. Um, and we've forgotten that. Like, yes, I love the Nolan films. I love the Dark Knight. I love, but, you know, the, if you want that, go nuts. If you want that in your action movie with reams and reams of dialogue and all these important philosophical matrix-like speeches and... Go ahead, but sometimes I'm just like, you know, just just tell your story with pictures! <laughs> like, that's what this is for! And people are just like, oh, well, there's no story. <clears throat> Therefore, I'm like, there's plenty of story! It's told with pictures! Because it's a visual fucking medium! Um, but no, but like I said, with that said, I, I would be lying if I said going into this, I thought I was going to get a, a touch more talking and a touch more character. Because like I said, because I did get that from Thunderdome, not as much, you know, and even in the first Mad Max. I honestly thought it was a relief. Um, <laughs> it was but, such but, a relief to not have that. But, but no, yeah, well that's, and that's why it's such an interesting film, because it's, what it does is so well, but the stuff that usually makes yeah. a good movie is, you know, especially a good action film where it's like a balance of them. It isn't here. It sort of takes this one element and just pushes it all the way forward, but it yeah. does it so well. And I think, too, there's just a burnout. Like, yeah. I, you know, I love the MCU movies, you know, Avengers, and but it's the same thing with all of those. Like, I, I mentioned Dark Knight, but, like, even with those, it's like, it's always like, well, we have to do this to get this Infinity Gem, but then we have to defeat it. It's like all of this dialogue explaining what you're going to do. And I, I guess maybe this film is so refreshing because I'm just burnt out on that. About by well, all this after comic like book, too, which we liked, yeah, but. comic book gobbledygook, and I say this as somebody who read comics and I love comics, but after a while, when that's all you get, summer after summer, after I'm like, you know what? I don't want this stuff explained to me with all this dialogue. Just show me something. <clears throat> I'd be curious how this film holds up, like maybe twenty years from now, which is not all to say like it would be bad. I, I think it would still be very good, but I am curious because I'm. I'm kind of with you, especially with comic book movies, and I'm not against that at all. Like, we like Avengers too. No, but, I've loved a but, lot. But, of I'm, what's I, out, but I am kind of wondering if a little bit of it is kind of the gravity effect, where it's like when you really think about it, it's like okay, in terms of what is it doing with, with character and story, it's nothing super new, but it does it so well, and you really feel the experience much more. And it, but in a sense, it's not both what movies the, are supposed to Well, and that's an interesting point, because well. they're both survival stories. Yeah. I mean, Mad Max, at best, they both create an this experience, one, yeah. and that's not bad. Um, but um, I, I'll argue this. It's like, I, there were a lot of people complaining about Gravity, just like, oh, Gravity has no story, therefore I'm not... Like, because to me, Gravity has way less story than... Fury Road has. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, I mean, there, there was a, they, it's got some about like, oh, I may have lost my kid early on and like, but the, the rest is just her surviving. That's yeah. it. There is no story. It's her versus space. Yeah. I mean, even with um, this, there it's is like, way so more story going on in this than anywhere in Gravity. And I say that as somebody who loved Gravity. I actually enjoyed yeah. that movie a lot. So, but, but yeah, I mean, and, and there, there's set up, you have to establish the world and, and really even the characters though, you know, kind of minimal they are, they still, they, they still work. And again, through that visual storytelling and, and decent acting acting um and uh you know and it is mostly survival and then at the end it's kind of like okay well it's technically it's survival but there's like more of a strategy to it so even then there's more twists and turns but yeah i think it's sort of the same idea where they both want to create an experience uh and this one is definitely i mean where gravity is a sci-fi you know like you're in space experience this is an action experience you want to feel like you're really in this 
you know, in this world, on this car, and, and just this rush is going the whole time, and you want to enjoy it, uh, but you also want to feel the threat of it, too. You know, get that gritty, you know, bloody world. Some graphic novels out there... Uh, you know, the, all comics and graphic novels, you have word bubbles. And some have tons of word bubbles, and you're like, oh, this is cool, and the plot's good, and the dialogue's fun. And then there's some comics that it's just like, it's mostly just pictures. It's mostly just imagery, very limited word bubbles, or, you know, you get some of the shorter comics that are just told entirely through visuals, and this is what that movie is. Yeah. And it feels like, so many shots are so gorgeously composed, that it just feels like kind of a graphic novel come to life. Mm. Like, the... the the color is always kind of oversaturated, which some people are complaining because it's not as quite as gritty as the earlier ones where he didn't have the ability to color correct. But I kind of like it. I mean, the, the fire is really orange. The explosion is <laughs> yeah, really red. Yeah, the sky red. is really the blue. The desert's really brown. It, it, and like, it looks it's... like a Wiley County cartoon in a good yeah. way. <laughs> um, no, I, the comparison I keep seeing is that this whole movie is the climax of Return of the King mixed with Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. If you want to see those two things together... I do. This is, yeah, and, and I do too. Um, but yeah, but like I said, I would definitely emphasize that like in terms of... Of, you know, it is what it, it's a Mad Max movie. It's an action film, and you have to know that going in. And if you don't, there's if much you more don't action like this a, than really yeah. any of the other Mad Max movies. I mean, if you don't more. like action films, I'm not sure I would. Mm. Yeah, you I know. Mean, but and, if you do, and, and that's if not you do. That's not all to say action films can have dialogue and can have talking, can have a, really a balanced movie. Like I said, I, I think Thunderdome is a really well balanced movie for the most part, and apart from some slow scenes, uh, you know. But for the most part, it's really balanced out, and you have the talking, you have the character, you have the story, then you have the action, then you go back here, then you have a slower moment, a faster moment, and it builds up to a great climax. Where this one, it's the climax majority of the film. But it's such an interesting experiment, in, and, it, and it works. They, they make it work, but that is what you are going to get. You know, do not expect anything like, oh, well, look, 98% of Rotten Tomatoes, this must really dive into the psyche of Mad Max and our characters. It, it, no, it, it's, it's done very well, but it is one element, you know, stressed throughout the whole thing. And it's still, there is a story, and it's visual storytelling, and you're very much right, the minimal... Uh, is, is still there in how they're telling the story. But it, there's it, a psyche it, to the mostly, character. He just doesn't say it. It's not said through a lot of dialogue. No, but not like... It, it, you, wouldn't, I, you wouldn't argue this. Like, okay, not like fucking whatever, like the Dark Knight or like even the Marvel superheroes or something like that. I mean, this it's is... Not, you it's get not this guy very quickly. On, but, it's not but neither he, were the other men. It's experience. not heavy on overtly spoken philosophy. Yeah, no, <laughs> but... That. But the same thing with the other Mad Max movies where it's like Max is, you know... He's the observer, and that's what the Millers do. They put in observers to these cr strange, crazy worlds. Uh, and, and they do it fine. They pick yeah, the oh, God. Uh, yeah, so I had a family friend, and he's like, well, I don't know if I want to see it, because I heard Mad Max isn't in it much at all. It's all a bunch of girls or something. And I'm, like, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm like, no! I'm like, he's in a... Like, I heard all these rumors about this, and I'm like, so I'm going in expecting, like, oh my god, what, is he going to be wearing a dress the whole movie or something? Like, like, not that I would... Actually, that would be kind of awesome. <laughs> I'd be so fascinated I, I, how that would work awesome. that in. Yeah, but like, I heard all these rumors, and I'm like, okay, so like, I went in, like, expecting something, and I'm like, it's nothing! There ain't, like, nothing wrong with the... It's like... He's in the beginning, he's in the entire movie, he basically, like, somebody's like, we've got to take orders from chicks. Did you hear, <gasps> that? Did you hear that? He takes orders from chicks. Oh, you mean he like in Thunderdome where he's looking for a job and takes orders from yeah. a chick? Did we, did we completely forget Thunderdome, by the way? Because everybody's like, well, it's, that's not Mad Max. That's not Mad Max. I'm like, really? So when he goes in looking for a job from Auntie Entity where she completely screws him, like, kicks him out into the desert once, he meets up with a bunch of children... Has to come back. Led by women. <laughs> led, by, uh, led by women. Co comes back, then fall, like, basically gets wound up in a battle there. And then Tina Turner comes up, Auntie Annie comes up again. And it's like, Looks like we make quite a pair, Raggedy Man. Have fun in the desert! Yeah. Woo! Takes off! I'm like, perfect <laughs> ending, by the way, too. I'm sorry, I really love Thunderdome. I, I do not get how anyone can I'm sorry, but like, oh no. Where we draw the line. Because, because Furiosa at one point gives an order. And, like, and I swear to God, like, every single order I heard was things like, this is how you turn on the truck. Mm. Because that's something Mad Max would need to know. <laughs> or, hey, the engine's about to blow. Go fix it. 
Which is something that is in Mad Max's best interest. Like, and he's barking orders to them half the time. Get in the back. He freaking takes yeah. them hostage in the beginning. He's like, Wait, he's gonna give me water. He's got, yeah. yeah, he's, he's going to leave them behind. I, the, what the hell? Well, and uh, guys, if you really have a problem with this, because I know this is such a, a terrifying thing for you, but um, imagine she has a dick. Imagine it's a dude. <laughs> Suddenly, it will be fine. <laughs> it's like, come on, guys. I'm like, I, I'm like, yeah, because somebody's like, oh, I, my penis is threatened trying to take orders from a woman. <laughs> well, like, I just heard that there was like somebody was here, trying guys. to, yeah, somebody was trying to pull a boycott or something. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, like somebody was telling me, it was like, oh yeah, somebody's trying to boycott the film because, and I'm like, why? And I'm like, have they seen it yet? And it was obvious they didn't because it was. Then I'm like. Well, if you just sat through the movie, you'd realize that Max is in this plenty, and he's the same damn Mad Max that's been in all three films. If, if anyone's ever complaining that somebody is trying to take away your balls, you never have them to begin with. And, you know, that goes for everything. If you're like, well, they're trying to take this away from my... It's, it's, no, that's, I, it's so clearly not how this works. <laughs> I wanted an awesome action film with a bunch of explosions, with Mad Max in it, with car chases and sandstorms and all of this. And all I got was a chick flick. There were women in it, so clearly it's a chick flick. <laughs> this is just know. pitch perfect with Mad Max. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Like, as a guy, I'm like, they all kind of look like supermodels. Why would I complain? <laughs> Why would I complain about that? Like, really? I want. I had to look at beautiful women I know. the whole time. I had, I had nothing but, I'm sorry. I had nothing but dusty guys <laughs> to look at, and I'm going to complain that, you know, and, and by the way, the other thing is, they were all interesting characters, too. I like the infighting and, that no, goes and on. you're right, very, very minimal in what they did. But, but you got it. You sort of figured it out very quickly. That, maybe that's the threat. Like, they were too interesting. <laughs> I had feelings for them. What's up with this? Can I just look at them? Like, I don't know. But Can I just yeah. hate them no, and never is, sleep with them? <laughs> there, is plenty, there is plenty of Mad Max in this movie. There, like, I don't know. All these rumors I heard earlier, because I was really expecting something out there. Like, I was almost disappointed. Like, I'm just like... Really? Like, I thought this was going to be really even more out there, like, and so, because they're like, oh, it's like some feminist tome, and I'm like, I, I, I don't know, I don't get it. Like, well, I didn't, know, uh, here's the thing, too, honestly, again, I didn't get feminist tome just so much as it's a survival story about a bunch of people, like, mm. yeah, they're like, hey, we're not your property, we're not your sex slaves, like, that to me isn't a feminist tome, that's just common fucking decency. <laughs> that's <laughs> just people. <laughs> they made Max a sex slave. I'm sure he'd say the same goddamn thing. Yeah, that's what... Well, and here's... Again, here's the thing. If people are upset, like, you know, oh, there's... We don't get enough of, like, Max in it. You know, first of all, like you say, he's all over the place. But second, Max, even in all the other films, was never the most interesting character. Again, he is the observer. And that's what the Millers write. Even Babe is an observer to all... Especially Babe Big in the City. I mean, he's an observer to all this strangeness. You know, and I would ar actually. I, I that like him no in the first. I would argue in the original Mad Max. There's that, way that's more probably where there's the most. But it does go. It does go way into survival mode with Road Warrior and Thunderdome, and yeah. and this one. It's like very much now, like you know. But that's the first story is also where everything happened that set everything up where he went into survival mode. So. Yeah. Um. And, and that's what after Road Warrior and after Thunderdome. I mean, this is what people want to see. And honestly, like. If there's, like, a group of guys that, you know, want to complain because, you know, of how they were born, you poor white guys, <laughs> you know. Joke's uh, on you, this movie's awesome. Yeah, I mean. It's, like, it's, you it's, missed it, and you had your chance. If you really can't find the joy in this movie, and that ruined it for you, I I don't, yeah, I feel sorry for you, man. Well, what you're complaining for is not going to be fixed anytime soon. Sorry. There's going to be more women in action films. Hey, remember that time when we turned aliens off in the last 20 minutes because it turned into a chick flick? Remember how I avoided Tomb Raider because it was a woman as the main character? I had to look at this hot woman with big breasts or What a terrible idea. And they're still not making female superhero movies because of this. I mean, I'm hoping Wonder Woman changes that, but it's like, guys... Fucking gold mine! I mean, even if like you're mostly men watching this or whatever, it's like fucking look at this. Look at Tomb Raider. Look at what they give done. me a good action movie, and I don't care if it stars a squirrel. Yeah, <laughs> actually, that might be awesome. We, we did. It was called Guardians squirrel. of the Galaxy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> raccoon. Why was to say we could have a squirrel girl movie? <laughs> like, I don't care. If it's a good action film. That's you know, make a good movie, and you know, whatever you want to imply with your movie. The, 
That's fine, but if it's a good movie, that's all I want. You know what I want? I, I don't need I don't need men, I don't need women, I want people. I want a person. You know, a good, interesting person and people, characters, that's what I want. You know, I don't care what you make. You can make him a raccoon. You can do we whatever have, you want, just make him interesting. We have such simple tastes. I know. God, what's wrong with us? You want to see people and explosions? You're not a real man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should just turn our balls in. <laughs> Silly us. I, I... Hey, any... <laughs> I don't know, any... It seemed to me like the showing I saw, there were a lot of guys there, but there were a ton of women there, and they seemed to be having fun. Any oh, action movie where you could have, like... I know tons of women that want to see this yeah. movie. Uh, Lindsay seen it, like, what, three, four fucking times in one weekend? Oh, yeah, like, she I mean, she's in love she, with this movie. She, like, blew 50 bucks on it, so... Yeah, I don't... I don't subscribe to this thing, like, you know, I... This one weekend, I saw both Pitch Perfect 2 and Mad Max. I saw Ex Machina on top of that. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to lie, I liked Mad Max a lot more than Pitch Perfect 2, but I actually like Pitch Perfect 1, so... Yeah. Oh, we're not mad! We're not mad! Infer, infer from we're now, whatever you want. Your vagina's <laughs> bad! Aka, <laughs> uh, excuse me? <laughs> and you quote the worst line in the entire movie. <laughs> That was Aka awkward. <laughs> but we should give our one minute review of Pitch Perfect 2 while we're because we had to see that first because uh, we have lives. <laughs> not, as, not as good as the first. Yeah. No, like First off, if you if you didn't like the first, you'll hate the You're just second. gonna hate this even more. If you did, like me, actually enjoy the first, then it's not as good as the first. I found it I would it, give it like a C. It's yeah, like a C. Like it, it had like it's a lot of repeat jokes and and half of them don't work, but there's like a handful of good enough jokes. I'm like, I'm glad I saw that. Like, you know, yeah. it, it, it was good enough. Um so yeah. And I, I was talking about like I said, it's very, very good. Very I like well the enough. soundtrack to the first one more. Because I was telling yeah. Brad about it, he's like, Yeah, I haven't seen Pitch Perfect. The trailers looked awful. And I'm like, Well, I thought the same thing. Because yeah. I saw it like we were flipping through on stations and I just landed on it. I'm like all right, I'll watch this for a couple minutes, and then I started laughing. I'm like, oh, wow. Actually kind of funny, yeah. Actually kind of funny, yeah. But I was telling him, I was like, yeah, but the soundtrack has total 80s and 90s awareness. I mean, it, op <laughs> it, it opens with I Saw the Sign, and Brad was like, it opens with fucking Ace of Base? All right, I'm in. I'm Netflixing this. Brad can't like that, and it's Jax. He can't like it. Mad Max. Take it away from Jax. Ruined. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, this could be like a very small group too. They're just really loud, <laughs> but it's just so funny. I it's think like, they. I think they are. Like, you're losing. <laughs> Don't I, you see? You're losing it's options. Be, variety. Get out of your one track mind and see all the options. It's got to be a small group because the movie did like 45 million. Yeah. I mean, Pitch Perfect. And Pitch did. Perfect did perfect. Uh, did did, did it, yeah. better. Yeah. It's like you're losing. <laughs> variety. Characters. Options. <laughs> Different things. There's different things out there. Go enjoy. Open the mind up. You're so limiting. Well, it's, let's be honest. <laughs> enjoy though. your Michael Bay Transformers. We want to see new stuff. Think of the demographics, though. Pitch Perfect Two is the date movie. Mm -hmm. No, that's true. Like, <laughs> I, that, we saw that part. Let me this way. I mean, my wife totally wants to see Mad Max. Yeah. Which is why I married her. Uh, but, you know, if I were in high school, and I'm like, okay, I gotta take some girl out on a date. I'm like, <laughs> pitch perfect. I, I, yeah, I, I wish that she would want to see Mad Max, but odds are it would probably would have been pitch perfect, too. I yeah. think it's, that's a more towards that high schooler demographic. I know for a fact my wife would not like Mad Max. She did very much enjoy Ex Machina, though. <laughs> There's your date movie, Ex Machina. <laughs> So, uh, no, she, my wife didn't know, she wanted me to report back, because it was like, she just didn't know what to make of Mad Max, and then when I started telling her about it, she's like, okay, I totally gotta see this yeah, movie, because I, I told her, I'm like, you like Guardians of the Galaxy, right? And I'm like, it, it, it's kind of like, the, it's just big, giant, action, fun, like, almost exhausting, but in a good way, like, you it's know. It's pretty much a really violent and gritty, mechanical Roadrunner cartoon. Yeah, it, it, it's just one set of people. Just replace the Coyote and Roadrunner with one big set of people with a smaller set of people, and they're ch and one's chasing the other, like it's through the desert. That's kind of it. Oh, it's so bad. And it's just crazy. as silly. Like there are times where we're um, laughing during this, like not because anything funny was happening, because it was just so extreme and so insane. We just had to laugh. Well, somebody's like, "Well, there's no comedy in it." I'm like, "It depends on your viewpoint," because <laughs> yeah. I laughed. 
hard yeah, for, for large it. chunks of this movie. When just that guy with the guitar comes on, I mean, I think we just lost it. The, I mean, we just the dude, the, the freaking Chinese acrobats on the Cirque du Soleil poles, <laughs> you know, like taking it like I was laughing hard just because I'm like, this is so batshit crazy. It's one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. If you're not laughing and having a good time when that guy with the guitar comes on, it, this is not. This is not the movie for you, and you. You know what? Yeah. If, I, if by that point you're not into it, just leave. Yeah. <laughs> when when guitar flamethrower guy out. comes out, if, if not you're not be any different. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't want to applaud or laugh or be like, all right, this is pretty awesome, then 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 just leave. Yeah. If you see it as really fucking stupid, just the rest is gonna be really fucking. That's stupid. That's our advice to you, to you and, and 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 leave it for the rest of us. Yes, because <laughs> we're loving it. So uh, yeah, that's about it, and uh, we'll see you next review later.